Hello, my name is Takuma Nakata, and I'm an attraction based in attraction designer based in Kyoto, Japan. And welcome to my VVV Gamma Learn Log Day Three. So today I was playing around with VVV Gamma, spending like an hour trying to understand how to make a very basic audio reactive graphic, and I ended up getting this uh, result. I'm gonna turn off the music. Uh, yeah, spending like an hour trying to make this graphic and basically I'm using this thing an audio engine is right here and then I'm using this node called FFT and then uh, yeah getting like tw 20 out of uh, 128 FFT and then I'm randomizing the position of each uh, audio spectra so that I don't get like similar like specific place going up and down and then, so this is the part that I want to share today. So the way we use uh, gamma does the spreading is a little bit different than how it used to be in beta. So this was a good learning and I wanted to share this part. And the rest of the part today, I wanted to use Stride Engine. So I'm using Stride Engine uh, in my patch. So if you want to use Stride Engine and follow today's tutorial, uh, please make sure that you're using the the preview version, not the stable version, because stable version doesn't have a Stride Engine support. So if you're interested in playing around this Stride Engine, uh, please make sure that you download this one. However, in today's tutorial, I'm not gonna follow the Stride Engine part. So this light and post part and uh, and these kind of parts wouldn't be captured. I just want to share how spreading work so multiple values won't you can't directly I'll, I'll just show that later on but yeah so this is what I want to do today uh, if you're also interested in using FFT the audio reactive node you also have to install uh, this nugget uh, from yeah a nugget called VL audio without this you wouldn't see any uh, audio uh, related nodes so if you're interested in doing that uh, make sure to install this once you have this installed you should be able to have this audio in your audio engine nodes here is where you specify which uh, driver you want to use this doesn't have to be connected once it's connected audio in will automatically get the audio input from this engine and then you can connect that to FFT okay so uh, let's get started so if you're already familiar with beta uh, what I wanted to share today is this. So basically in beta, uh, creating a spread was quite simple. So you just had to connect. Uh, so this circular spread, as you can see, it has uh, 20 spreads and 20 Y spreads. And then we could directly connect these to translate node here and then uh, put that in the, uh, the shader and then uh, repeat multiple spheres however if we want to do something similar to this in uh, a gamma I'm gonna open up a new patch just hide this somewhere and then render oh I don't have skia here oh skia yeah there is a skia render I forgot how to use this uh, skia Yo, Skia is already here. Ren, render, yeah, Skia should have a render. So this is the render. So I'm not going to be using Stride since I don't think everyone will have Stride. So I'll just uh, try use Skia render, which is more of a basic uh, render that uh, you can use both in the uh, in the preview version and the stable version. Uh, so I'll just stick myself here. And then I'll create a sphere. This one should also be a skia one. So I, right now I have a skia sphere and a stride sphere, but there should be sphere mesh, stride. Doesn't skia have a sphere? No? Box, maybe? <laughs> I'm not really sure how this works. So let's try getting a box here. A box, this one is a stride box, a 3D box. Oh, okay, okay. How do I use this? 
Yeah, I'll just stick to uh, stride engine, sorry. So I'll just replicate this. So I need a scene window for uh, scene window for stride engine. So this one will be the scene window and for today's render. And then I'll need a, a root scene. This is also a necessary one that we need. And then I'll add a sphere. So we can directly add a sphere here. At the moment, I don't see anything because I need a lighting. So I'll just add a skybox light from Stride Engine, then connect it here. Okay, now we can see a very basic sphere right now. So what I want to do is something like this, uh, what I did in VVV Beta. And I want to create a circular spread and just spread this sphere all around. So I'll create a circular spread, circular spread, which is this one. Uh, it should be there in default, and then I'll make this count to 20 as like this one here. Yep. And then width I might change, so I'll just highlight this one. And basic input are almost the same as what we had in beta here, so I wouldn't explain that. Uh, one big difference is, as you can see, circular spread in beta had two different output for X and Y. Here it's just one output, and it has both X and Y. So that's a bit of difference. Anyway, it's not that important. Another thing I want to add is a trans uh, translate. I'm not gonna be scaling anything, so I'll just use a translate. And then once you click this, it asks you like which which type of uh, translate do you want, like 2D or 3D? And I was just, I just need a 3D version, so I'll just be using this one. And then, as you can see, I can already connect translate to a sphere, which the way we connect is a bit different, but it's not a big problem. And then, as we can see now, I want to connect a translate from circular spread to translate. Here, however, this one is a vector 2D output, and this one is a vector 3D output, and in Gamma, it doesn't allow you to... Uh, connect uh, vector 2D to vector 3D. So I think I'll need to do some sort of like X, Y, Z node. And this one converts a 2D vector to a 3D vector. But the small, this one has a really small Z, which means um, Z will be an individual input and X, Y will be one input. So I'll just press this one. Now I can connect. Uh, I should be able to connect this to here. However, as you can see, we already can't connect even though they are both uh, a vector 2D. In VVV Gamma, uh, spreads can't be connect directly connected to uh, how this individual uh, vector 2D input. So to do this, we need to use a node. Oh uh, no, we need to use this function called. Uh, say layout no surround for each so if you right click this guy surround and for each I'll just zoom in just to make sure that everyone can see this so XYZ right click surround and for each once you click this uh, your XYZ node will be surrounded with oh we can actually zoom in like this so as you can see XYZ node will be surrounded by this uh, how to say, a very how to say, low opacity grid. And uh, what this does is it, it does some sort of like, I, if you're familiar with programming, 4H is like sort of function that like you let it do like for each time. So if you want to spread is basically a repeat of vector 2D. So it has 20 vector 2D, which means it's repeating vector 2D for 20 times. And uh, we need, so this for each does that for you. Uh, so what I have to do is, and as you can see now, if I press circular spread vector 2D spread output, it allows me, it highlights this two different place that we can actually input. It also has an output, but I'm not gonna connect it down because I want to input these. So I'll just try pressing, connecting this to both of them and see what that does. And I forgot the name of this 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 guy, these guys. 
there is a name. I, I remember Yorick was calling this something, but I forgot what it was. Anyways, as you can see, if I, the first one that I connected is this weird shape. Uh, and then, as you can see, this one was a spread, but this one now gets converted as a vector 2D. It's not a spread anymore. However, it's a for each spread. So it, if I output this, it actually is a spread. But, uh, but for this one, we can, inside here, we can like let it, like, how do you say? We can design a for each loop for this to, to like, if we want to add something 20 times, then, uh, for example, we can do, uh, like, I'll just remove this Y. Just add a plus plus uh, node. And then I would say like, okay, I want a plus one for every single input and I'll just output that. And then what happens is that as you can see right now, so I'll just zoom out a little bit. This output used to be like this, but now every single uh, output has plus one added here. So that's what it's doing. So this for each is uh, adding one to each vector and then it looping inside here and then outputting the result as again from this pin so here we can calculate and do things like what we used to do quite easily on circular spread like here we could just uh, like add add one to every single spread like just plus one uh, and then we could have every single spread as a as type five or something, it's plus one spread, but it doesn't go like that in gamma. In gamma, now we have to uh, how to say specify a for this for each loop for it to do that kind of stuff. However, you uh, otherwise you wouldn't be able to connect this directly here. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to explain for today. So I'll just delete this plus one and then. Here, so as you can see, this one, the second one, which is a sort of like a diamond rectangle, it's basically just pathing through the spreads. So we can't really connect this to X, Y, Z here. And I haven't really figured out what we're, we'll, be, we'll be using this for, but for sure there is a reason why this is here. But at, at the moment, I don't know what we're using this. So I'll just stick part that. I just want to replicate this inside VVVV gamma. So as we got this for each, now we can actually connect this X, Y, Z, a circular spread to X, Y, Z, and then convert this to vector 3D, a vector 2D to vector 3D. So now we should be able to connect this, so now this is a spread of vector 3D, so we should be able to, uh, so now this is a vector 3D, so we should be able to connect to this translate vector 3D. However, again, since this is a spread, it doesn't allow me to connect it here. So what we can do is we can just uh, put this translate uh, node inside here and I still don't know how to copy paste it here it doesn't allow me to get in so what I would do is control X and uh, just cut it and then uh, press this for each and then control V and then copy paste it inside here so that we now have this translate node inside for each loop so now we can connect this guy here then we can get the output However, um, there is another problem. Uh, so I think I did something here. Yeah. So as you can see here, I have this sphere node inside. Uh, how do you say this for each as well? And uh, yeah, I guess there was a reason for me to do that. Uh, group. Let me just try this group this node is a group spectral group spectral oh, no. oh, uh. stride yeah it doesn't allow me to connect it here 
So we also have to uh, put the sphere inside here to make sure that, uh, I mean, it's just one entity, not a spread of enti spread of sphere. So I'll just, again, cut this one, uh, press F for each, and then copy paste it here. And I'll just put the translate to the sphere, and then I'll connect this guy right here. And then I don't need this one, so I'll just delete it. And now, I still can't connect this sphere anywhere, and we need this node called group spectral. And this one is a stride engine, so I'll use this one. And now we can actually connect this uh, spread of spheres to this group node. And this is not like uh, the group node that we used to have in beta. I think it's a little bit different, but I haven't really understand that part, so I'll just skip it. And then now we should be able to connect um, a spread of spheres into the renderer. So now I think the width, oh wait, yeah, I think the sphere is a bit too big, so I'll just make these guys a little bit smaller. Uh, made it too small. And then I'll zoom in a little bit, a little bit smaller. And now we've got a spread of spheres exactly in the same order as the one we have in beta. So what I wanted to share today is uh, uh, to do uh, spreading inside VVV Gamma, we have to make sure that we use this for each, otherwise it wouldn't work like how it used to be in beta. This sounds a bit complicated, but I'm for sure there is a reason uh, that they put this here and uh, for each uh, function here because there were a lot of things that we couldn't like do sort of like calculation. And sometimes if we have multiply here and it, it all gets multiplied and now we can actually specify like okay which one is multiplied and which one is not we can do more complex uh, calculation inside here and things like that so i mean we j it's just a different way of thinking and once we understand how it works at the at the moment feel it very very like natural even though i can't code at all this sounds a bit more straightforward so yeah and now we can keep doing a lot of stuff so if we go back to our my patch that i showed in the beginning uh so i have different spreads and spreads will output a spread of value so uh, if we want to connect this to like i don't know colors or anything like that we would have to use this for each and then make sure that all the loops will be done inside here and then the result should be connected to the group node and uh, yeah this function should be the same in skia render as well so if you're interested in doing on um, if you're not using the one that has stride engine uh in skia it should be the same way using this for each i mean this is a very very how to say I think it's one of the most important functions that we should remember if we're moving from beta to gamma. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, that was it for today. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time.